Okay, so we're learning uh, chapter six of the gates of oneness. And we're learning how to connect everything up to the oneness. However, for the oneness to make an impact for us, for our thinking to make an impact on us, um, it's important that we make an emotional preparation that our emotions are prepared in a way that when we start thinking and, and understanding and learning, it's going to have the lasting effect. That's what this chapter is about. What type of preparation do we make um, that's a lasting effect? And in the times of the Mithil Rebbe, traditionally in Judaism, um, people would focus on the negative with the intention to get to the positive. In other words, they would cry in order because after, whenever there's crying, there's also the other side of, of if this uh, crying, if the situation would be resolved, so how happy I would be. So they weren't crying in order to be depressed, God forbid. They were crying in order to evoke the happiness which is behind that, the other side of the coin. And the problem is if people just uh, evoke a negative emotion and they don't move from there, they don't realize that there's a compound emotion. So that is a risk that started to, to happen in our generation. And the Rebbe modified it, modified it. Instead of crying, it's feeling devastated, uh, but in a specific way. And the point is not to be devastated. The point is that that will evoke, there's, there's many emotions. And it basically, once we trigger that emotion, many other emotions are triggered, including our heart becomes open to happiness, our heart becomes open to pleasure. Our heart becomes open to insight, and it, it makes impact on our life, on on our, on our, on our body, on, on our hearts, and our learning will make impact. So let's let's read inside. We started reading from um, let's let's go back and read a little bit from the Mittel Rebbe uh, from last week. Then we're going to read what we from the Rebbe the way it's applied, how to use it in our days and when to put it into our daily schedule. And then we're going to finish off with the Mittal Rebbe again. So let's go. Start, we'll start with the, yes. Oh, we, okay, we, okay, when the Mittal Rebbe, where were we up to? Gimel Madregas. Let's, we, we read the beginning. Ha'alaf below, yeah, yeah, it's a ha'alaf over there. Maybe it's on that, maybe it's on the next page, one second. It's quite small. Okay, so the, the first one we said is um, on the level of Bina, which is the left brain. And in the left brain is the potential for happiness. The deepest happiness that a person can achieve is through um, using their left brain with effort. Um, okay, so it's, let's go back to the previous page. The first level, it was on the previous page, at the end of the previous page, I see. Okay, the right, the beginning, beginning. Okay, I don't know. Let's start. Okay, so let's let's three lines from the four lines from the from the bottom. Kachi matzev akav abeis shiyetsu We're saying it's um, an emotions are 
are uh, on a great scale. So it, it so the if you if you hit one side of the emotion, you also trigger the other side of the scale. Kachi so you will find kava base, the second ruler of the scale, shayechimimim, which comes out of the um, negative scale, and the negative scale gives energy to the positive scale, which is the crying, if a person cries because they do not see the revelation of the light in his soul, because the, the divine is covered up, until a person is not happy with their life. They don't find meaning in the life. So so Gile Lukus, the revelation of the soul is meaning in their life. We said this last week, if a person doesn't find meaning, and actually that actually makes him a vessel for meaning, by the way. So if it, if it bothers him that he doesn't have meaning, so that means that, that he wants meaning. And if in the past the person uh, tasted uh, what a divine experience is, so that a person is more bitter in his soul, when he doesn't have the divine experience, he doesn't feel like he's living. And also the, to the opposite, according to the depth, deep bitterness, and the, the crying, that he's not satisfied with his life, the physical life, that's how much you're going to be able to see the power of the pleasure and happiness in divinity. How, is, how strong is his desire for, for his divinity? Because these two scales are extremely equal. And this is the explanation of the, of the Zoyar that we were quoting. That in the heart you have, let's let's go on to the next page. In the in the heart we have, um, in the heart we have crying on one side, in and bechedva and happiness besitra on the other side. Sitra is a Aramaic word. Beshok beshikul echad beshava mamish, and it's one scale extremely equal. So now higher than this. We did the first level. The second level is which is the hidden pleasure on the right brain. If you if you turn on, if you activate the the, the happiness and the pleasure on the right brain, a person also becomes extremely humble. in Yiddish and Yiddish is very moved from himself. From the deep pleasure that he has in his essence, so the opposite happens, which comes out of the deep pleasure. What happens is, the response is that he's willing to put his life aside. Anything that's going to be an opposite to divinity, even He's he's gonna get rid of any ego. Ego is meaningless to him. He's gonna be unsatisfied with his self satis self like egotistic life, and he's gonna be totally humble. But his true humility. He's even not gonna want spiritual. Levels to say what's in the heaven. I don't want anything in the earth, palace area. All I want is the revelation of the essence of divinity. Because these two sides of the scales are very equal, but it's on the second level. Level, the Dal. That's enough. Now there's a third level, which is on the level of the crown. And that becomes, that comes from trying to understand, and he realizes how be, uh, divinity is beyond him, because his brain does not have the physical um, megabyte power to be able to process uh, this level of divinity. 
uh, and it happened the Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva, who's one of the people that the Torah was passed down. There's 40 rabbis from Moses till the end of the Talmud, and it was an unbroken chain. How the main Torah, because Torah is passed down not only through text, but it's also passed down person to person, face to face. And one of the people in that chain, the center of the chain, was Rabbi Akiva, and his his he started to tear up. Besides Amukas, when he was learning the deep secrets, and his brain wasn't able to handle it, and actually, actually became a vessel that God gave him a gift. He was studying the wonder of the level which is hidden from all hidden levels, which is what behind the essence of the unlimited the light, Mamish. I should build him a cloud. It's actually not understandable with the human brains. Adaraba, the opposite happens. Kochiamik, Yeser, the more a person goes deeper into this Yeser Yifla, the more wondrous this level of divinity becomes. Shemize, Dafka, Libadeg, and that is why his heart is worrying. I don't know if, you've, if, if somebody is extremely curious and he's not able to figure something out, so it's going to bother him. So this is. That's an experience which could help you understand what's going on over here. And he cries. Why is he crying? He's crying because he really enjoys it. But Shukan, he has a big desire, Lahasik, to, to grasp divinity. Ben Yochel is not able to. Now, the Yudua Shazel, Ikar Bechinas Akli, Lubechinas Chachma, Beraz in Deiraisa. This idea of realizing that you're missing something, that is actually what becomes a vessel that a person can actually grasp and soak up the secrets. And that's why in the secrets of Torah, the reason why they're secret is because even if you're told the secret, your mind will not grasp what's being told to you. So you have to make an emotional presentation, pre preparation that, that will prepare you to actually be a vessel to be able to grasp what is ungrasped ungraspable. Basically, it's a gift that God gives. Measure cause of Makamacha, like it's, it says in another place, and Maestrim Raza Terra will never give over the secrets of Terra only to somebody whose heart is worried in, in his, in his, inside him. Right? Because it's not going to work. You cannot, people are not going to be able to, to get it. Uh, but then when his heart became a vessel and then he was able to understand beyond it's like beyond what human nature allows us to do beyond what the brain allows us to do he, he actually got the gift and he was under able to grasp um he, then he was able to experience happiness in the essence of god now, even though what Rabbi Akiva experienced when he was given the gift, he's 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 experiencing something which is an emotion which is concrete, specifically. So that's not the essence of God. I will But the truth is that all the, these emotional states are rooted in the essence of the pleasure, Hanelam, which is hidden, which is not possible under normal circumstances. And that's why he first experienced the opposite, which is the crying from the lack of this of, of this revelation. Because originally, as you approach the subject, it's totally wondrous. Because on the third level, these two rulers exactly equal in weight, Vishava Mamish, actually, they're really equal. According to the great pleasure that a person ha has, that he would take pleasure in the essence of God, when he would understand the essence, 
so too it would express himself in the opposite Chuba which is the crying Hamuka, deep crying when he realized Lahasik, when he realized he his his brain does not have the physical capability to grasp this. Venimsa, oh now we're gonna say the three levels. Nimsa Seda Madrigas Bedavar Vipucha. It turns out that the three steps in something and its opposite, Kahe. They are like this. A person experiences happiness and a deep happiness when he understands when the when divinity is grasped in his mind. The and the opposite happens. When he when he has a, a opposition which is opposite of this. In other words, when you have the opposition, you realize how, how much the pleasure is. That's on the level of the left brain. Now on the right brain, on a higher level, is the, the pleasure, not just happiness, but pleasure and deep happiness. The point is pleasure, which is hidden in the, in the power of what? The power of what is the, is the, uh, in, in, is the inside of the right brain the right brain doesn't have a con concrete understanding, but it has an idea, has a what. But chokhmah, and it's it's chokhmah is insight. But atzmut zelukus hamahave, when a person understands the essence of the of divinity, which brings the world into existence, bekeche behipuche, and its power is expressed in the opposite emotion. Yitzel limes bechayev comes out when a person is ah uh, this this his 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 life is meaningless to him. Bechenes kol zolase and any other thing up besides God, kamemili b'shemayim, like the like the statement, "Who is in our heaven? I don't want anything. I just want God." Vilamayla. Okay, now the third level of vilamayla, gamiz and and even higher than this, ha'ina b'achet is the pleasure and the happiness ba'atzpos elokus. That's in the essence of God. Essence. So we're saying now essence. Now we're going to the essence ba'atzpos elokus. So the first level is Bina, left brain, then right brain, then the essence. Like it says, in the future, people will be happy in the essence of God himself. When it's revealed to them, and its power, you can see when, it's, when the opposite emotion is expressed. When his brain is not able to handle this great the revelation, Yifke is going to cry. Just like the crying of a faithful friend, Benafche, Bafrade, when he separates from him, like, like King David and, and his very good friend, and they really liked each other. And when they met each other for the last time, it says, they kissed each other and they cried. And the reason why they felt that this comes from great pleasure. When they're together, that's why when they were left leaving and separating for the last time, they felt terrible. Now we understand why happiness is in the left brain and pleasure is from the right brain of insight. So even when you understand, when you grasp something, you're only grasping how the divine light focuses and when when you understand it, so it's only understanding a limited divine light. So that's not the essence of God. Nevertheless, he answers, it's not the essence of God. So Avala He says, No, even though you're experiencing happiness in, in some small level of divinity, nevertheless, the experience reaches in the essence of God.
command is Shama Shanani Nizibashkin Namamish. When people pass away, they go to the gate, gate, Garden of Eden. What's the pleasure? The, what's the reward? The reward is divine revelation. When the, when the God speaking, which is called the Shekhinah, means God speaking, creating the world. When they when they understand what he's speaking, they get a lot of pleasure. And the pleasure is not a smaller level, but it's connected with the essence of, of F, essence of God. in the Garden of Eden. So in the Garden of Eden, the reward that people get is actually divine revelation, understanding God speaking. Even though their understanding comes through a, a contrasting, in other words, a, it's, it's held back. In order that it shouldn't be overwhelming, nevertheless, nevertheless, it's happiness in God himself. That that is the meaning of saying that happiness is one side of the heart, and the opposite, which comes from the happiness, is the crying. And it happens on three levels: left brain, right brain, and essence. And these and these. Two sides of the scale on these three levels are really, really equal. equal. It says that, that God wasn't happy when, you, when people are not happy in serving him from all the good things they have. What is that? Be happy that you have the opportunity to understand the creator. And you have, an, you have a responsibility to appreciate it. And in the future, what are we going to be doing? In the future, very soon in the future, it says, We will see God eye to eye. That's what people will be doing. On that day, very soon, we will say, we will recognize divinity and we'll say, this is our God. Directly. What is God? We see him. And then, we will be extremely help, uh, happy. Now, Nagila, the Hebrew word Nagil means the, the extreme depth of happiness. Vasimcha is more of an external emotion. Davka. People are going to have a deep happiness, Nagila, a deep happiness from the revelation of divinity, which is going to happen very soon, Kiyadua, like it's known, Vidal. I, I really am, um, you know, I'm really thinking about the present situation that we're really experiencing the opposite. When people live, people till very recently were living in the hustle or bustle of life, but then when it gets taken away from them, people start to think, well, what's really the most important thing? It's relationships, it's family. Um, what is really uh, significant in this world? And that really is making them a vessel for the revelation of divinity. So that's what he's saying, Avalaksha, but nowadays, this pleasure that we as humans have in the revelation of divinity and be able to see God directly actually expresses himself through the opposite. Specifically through the opposite. Which is the crying. On the other, on the on this side of the heart. And then on the negative side, it goes up three levels, right? And it goes up and up. Like it says that they will go in crying. But basically when you plant, if you don't have enough food and you're planting and you're putting seeds in the ground, so you're actually putting food on the ground to rot. You don't know if it's going to grow. So it's you're like you're going, a person is going with crying with tears because maybe they, they could eat those seeds and live a little longer. So they, it feels very bad, right, when they put planting. But when it starts to grow, it, it brings extreme happiness. That's it says. A person goes and cries when he's planting seeds and there's nothing else left to eat. But when they grow... 
extreme happiness. And in the future, in the future, we're going to have, we're going to laugh. Like it says, that's when our mouths will be filled with laughter and not like nowadays. Like it says in the future, we're going to see like a the Roman gladiator, like a Roman um, gladi gladiator fight. It's going to be between, we're going to be able to look back at our life and how we were challenged by the evil inclination inside us. And it's going to look like two animals fighting in a gla gladi gladiator arena. And then we're going to look back and we're going to have a sigh of relief and we're going to go, wow. That's Kanegia. Kanegia is the, that's how, when you when you look back at your life after the after the tenseness is over, it's going to be, a, we're going to have a very, very difficult, different way of looking at everything. We're going to be, see the positive side. And this is, what it says, when Mashiach comes, we have three forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But when Mashiach comes, we're going to appreciate it. We're going to appreciate the second one, which is corresponding to strictness. Abraham was a man of kindness. Yitzchak was a man of focus and strictness. And we're going to, and Yitzchak also means the love because from the strictness, are the things that we've seen in this world, then we're going to laugh and we're going to say, Yitzchak, you're our father. We appreciate that idea of a father. The laughter will come in the future. But the laughter is born from the opposite. From it, the opposite of it. Like the, the, the crying is now in the exile. How we see how things are messed up. A lot of people now recognize that things are messed up. Now all this, now we understand how Judaism works. Basic practices in Judaism. We understand Tam Amiti, the real reason Linian Tikkunatais. Why in the Jewish prayer book, we have a prayer called Tikkun HaGatzeis, which is getting up at the middle of the night, by the middle of the night exactly, like 12 or in the summer, 1, 1, 1 a.m. And people would cry. People don't do it so much anymore, but, they, but it was very traditional. I'm gonna. I see. There's a question that came up. I'm gonna. We're gonna stop for a question in a second. We we'll ju just explain this. So people used to get up at at uh, at exactly 12 a.m. They probably went to sleep around six or seven when it became dark. And they would they would get up and sit on the floor and cry about the destruction of the temple and the lack of divinity. And the point of that client crying was not to feel bad. The whole thing was he was making an emotional preparation, which is of value, the nefesh to the soul, in order that in the morning when he gets up, he's going to have a revelation of the real pleasure, that he was going to be able to be happy in divinity itself. So the prayer was really an emotional preparation. But Kahai Gavna, and there's other things in Judaism where we see a person doing something negative, but it's really emotional preparation to, to loosen up the heart, to be able to be a vessel for the positive. Now, and he's saying that even though the people, when they used to cry in the prayer of the middle of the night, Tikkun Chatzais, who the most pursued him. The reason why he's crying is like, he's not crying over the lack of, the, it was a very personal uh, crying. The person would cry and have tears, Al Chatas Nurim, of the sins of their youth. Because what happens sometimes, people, when they're teenagers, they do sins and later on they regret. 
and they realize that these sins block them spiritually. So it's bothering them. When they're more mature, these, the sins of the past, of the teenage years, they're blocking them spiritually and they're crying in the middle of the night in order to be unblocked. One second, where are we going? Well, not yet, we're not, I didn't finish reading yet. The Kahai Gavna, and so too. It says in the verse that my tears are bread for me day or night. King David said, how come tears are bread? Because the bread is when I shed the tears, it would give him the ability to pray with a happy heart in Krishna. When a person says the Shema prayer, which is the prayer where we Say, hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Of a tefillah, and then there's a, another prayer, which is basically uh, the 18 blessings, the chakras virus, and we say this morning and night. We first say, the hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And then we have another prayer of 18 blessings, and that prayer is like the 18 parts of the spinal cord where the energy. For the new day comes down. And it's best done with happiness, right? That's what the energy comes down with happiness. Because tears from the distance he caused upon himself from the sins and the things that that he ended up lacking, right? Now on the, let's go to the next page. Shall I? So I guess we're going to finish this, and then we'll read the the the, the rabbi. Mesaktim bechinas moker apagam. They fix up the source of the blemish in his soul. Chu dafka prikasel, which is dropping the yoke. Let's malchus shemaim of the king kingdom of a heaven. Let's explain this. This is very, very important because this is a key to self-control. This is a key to self-control. It is very difficult when a person does a lot of bad things because they have an urge to do so. It is very difficult to have a war and he knows it's wrong and he doesn't want to be doing it. And it's very difficult to fight a war on every single battle. However, if the person would go to the source, why am I, what is wrong with my soul that I need to reach out to these pleasures that I really don't want to be reaching out to them and I want to be in peace with myself without having to go to these pleasures. So what is wrong with my soul that I need to do that? So if I can fix up that one thing in my soul, then I, I wouldn't have a battle over my actions anymore. So that one thing that I can fix up in my soul is called Prikas El Malchashvayim, taking up the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. What is that yoke of kingdom of heaven? Now we know what a yoke is. A yoke is the thing that you put on a bull and then it plows the field. Now, it's very significant because a human being doesn't have the strength to do agriculture in a way that he won't starve. In other words, the amount of energy that a human needs to spend to be able to put the seeds in the field is more right, than the, feed, than the food that he can get from those seeds. So basically, if a man does agriculture, they will starve. So unless he's hunting Deer, if he tries to do agriculture, a human will starve. So he takes a bull, but the bull is a wild animal, is very strong, and the bull will pull a, a certain, like a, a device that makes holes in the ground that it becomes very easy to plant the seeds. And the bull is very strong. But in order for the bull's energy to be useful, it needs a device to hold on to the shoulders of the bull that's going to pull this 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 knife this knife that is that is digging up the ground 
And that is called denial. So an oil is a focusing device that focuses the energy. So what happens is when a person's energy, human energy now, is not focused, it's all over the place. In other words, a person's eyes and ears are taking in anything, any types of energy that's not focused, then what happens is they don't have the, they're, they're basically not filtering what's coming into their, through their eyes and ears. They're not filtering the gates. So the energy is going all over the place. So what happens is it, it, it causes the soul to need all sorts of weird pleasures, which well, at least desire all sorts of weird pleasures. And then a person does all sorts of weird behaviors and he doesn't know why he's doing them. He doesn't want to be doing them. He doesn't want to be enslaved to all these other behaviors. So what he needs to do is he needs to focus his energy, but he doesn't want it. He doesn't have, he needs to take on the yoke of heaven, meaning I am going to filter what's going to come into my eyes and my ears. But he doesn't have the, emotional fortitude to do that so he asked for god for help this is like the 12-step program he realizes god i can't do it I'm, a, I'm an alcoholic or whatever it is i can't do it i need help so what happens is the crying is the experience of going rock bottom when a person goes rock bottom and they feels i can't do it any other way please higher power help me i need to be able to control my energy and focus it so i don't have to be drinking this alcohol or whatever it is that i want to overcome so that the, the, his problem is that he's he's that addict has pricked us oh he he threw away the human oak of, of a yoke of heaven and he can't put it back on without help Help me put the yoke back on, right? And that is what is practiced in, in Yiddishkeit, in Judaism. They would practice this whenever they did Tikkun Chatzais, once a week, twice a week. They would cry that I, my energy is, is, is split up. Please help me fix up the core of the problem so then the doing the bad things, I don't desire to do the bad things. All I need to do is protect my thoughts. The only thing I need to protect is rumination of the mind. And that, that, that Once God gave me back my yoke, then all I need to do is make sure I don't think about the wrong things for too long. And it won't be so hard to control my ears and my eyes either because I just want to, won't want to go there. So that's what I'm crying about. And then on a deeper level, on a, my, my, the, the, the addictions that I may experience on my personal level is really a symptom of something that's going on much greater because each person is really a like a channel for the divine shechina, for the divine God speaking, where basically the energy of God travels from person to person. And if a person has a blockage, a person has his own addictions, and, and because of that, it's a blockage for the divine energy. Basically, it's sort of blocked for everybody. It's like it's like a, what we say, a blood clot. That's what's happening. Everybody's complaining about the blood clots, the blood clots from the spike protein. And, and so basically, when an individual has this, this blood clot, because they're, they have this personal addiction, but really that's a symptom of a, of a on, that's a micro level, I'm on a macro problem of the entire world, that the entire um, revelation of God, the God, fact that God's speaking, we can't see that he's speaking. He's speaking all the time. God is speaking all the time, and we don't understand why. That's called the exile of the Shekhinah. So my personal addiction is really a symptom of a bigger problem, which is called the exile of the Shekhinah. My personal, like spiritual blood clot, is exile of the Shekhinah. Let's go on further. Huba. But there are Prat. So this 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 problem comes to me in a, a particular part, is in, in a part. It's like a personal, just a there's, it's, there's a clot, it's a blockage in one area. Behold Nitzit in every divine spark. 
And then what happens is, when a person has tears, it actually picks up and takes away the problem. It takes away the cloth. It used to be that people would cry and then they would take their hands and wash their face, wash their face with their own tears. And what would happen when they would wash their face with their own tears, the spiritual damage, the spiritual blockage would be cleaned from the face. And actually, you know, you can look at people and, and it doesn't take much to be able to know on a person's face where they're holding. But when they wash their tears with their with their with face with their tears, it would take away the black totally take away the blemish. Then all you need to do afterwards is make sure you don't mess up again. With this era So what happens is when a person cries on his own personal blockages, spiritual blockages, that causes a spiritual tears on the global macro sense. Shimanaga, which is which is the opposite opposing energy which is happening on a macro level. And the reason why there is a tears on a macro level is because Shehua Khedva Tsuma Kanal, because the deep pleasure in divinity being revealed, and, and, and there's they see, there's a cosmic pleasure of the revelation of the divinity. And what happens is then the divine soul gets light, gets light, gets light in when they say hero in the morning, when they say hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And then they do the 18 black blessings, which corresponds to the 18 parts of the spinal cord. When new energy, new divine energy comes down to create the new day. So the crying actually becomes bread for his soul. And what happens is when a person decides to do the opposite, when they throw off the yoke and they want to bring in Bad energy through their eyes and ears, which is the which is the happen the opposite of, of tears. A person feels arrogant and he says, I want a narcissistic and self-centered, and I want what I want. So what happens is it causes damage in his soul, right? It's called Prikasel, throwing off the divine yoke. When we say, Hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, we we are actually taking on the divine yoke. And when a person is arrogant and they want to just bring in any energy which comes in through the eyes and ears and they just open in that way, that's the opposite of tears, opposite of sensitivity. A person blesses himself in his heart and he says, I will go with the freedom of my heart. I feel I'm free. I can do anything. Actually, it's an illness. It's like you have a worker in a company and he decides to do the opposite. And he throws off the, the, the it's like a soldier even. A soldier decides to do the opposite and he throws off the yoke of his responsibility as a soldier to protect everybody. That's what he means by a servant, because basically the, any o, uh, organization of people used to be in the olden days before technology. They, they, in order to have a, an organization of people, they, there would be groups of people that would work together really hard. So if one person is not doing their job and he throws off the yokes, everybody suffers. So basically that willingness that he doesn't care anymore. That is what's causing him that he's going to do everything opposite of what the master wants. In other words, in a, what, what, the soldier, when he does, he, he fails to perform his tasks and he does the opposite. That's not the problem. The problem is the decision 
to go against his oath. That is the throwing off the yoke, the decision to go against his yoke. And when that decision is made, when they decided to work for the other side, everything, all the bad things happen, come from them that. This is a this is really the this the essence of the of self-control. And really the essence of the 12, the 12 steps is, is 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 actually doing the mechanics of it. Vine. And Rabbi Khair, I just want to mention it's 8.54. If you're gonna to want to do the other mimer and you have a question also. Um I think we should just we should continue because we, we I, I don't wanna I don't wanna lose the track. Okay. It says in in the Psalms that there are there are evilim is like evil people at least they behave evilly and they want to change. But they're pisham and they're walking in their way where they do a lot of bad things like one bad thing after another. It's like the uh, multiple, like a guy does crime and he just does it again and can't stop. These people, these people are, are rebellious. They throw away the yoke. And they feel bad and they feel regret. And they even fast from all their sins. This is the sins of the youth. So guess what? It's not going to help. My yoyel, it's not. What is this going to help that they that they feel regret? Because what's really going to help them is they have to learn wisdom. But if they they despise wisdom, their soul despises wisdom. So they never ever solve the source of the problem. You have to be into something else. You have to be, uh, you have to have a hobby in wisdom in order for the other things not to be pleasurable for you. They don't care about deep pleasure. Which is actually going to give him life to the soul. They don't want to study. They don't want to actually do what's going to give life to them their soul and that's what it says in that psalm that describes these people that feel regret but they never really change they actually get to the to, to the gates of death they're gonna they, it's like they do the overdose even when they feel bad um, you have to I'm God I'm putting in front of you life and good and what is life and good or bad and, and pleasures not good pleasures lust so so God is saying you can choose life and good you as a human are able to use your intellect and reveal the good heart and the deep pleasure, which is not going to lead to bad things, it's going to lead to good things. God says you can choose bad and, uh, you know, death and ba badness. When you take off the yoke and you open up your eyes and ears to, to anything. And when they would cry in the middle of the night, that would be the main preparation in the soul to fix up the source of the problem. That in the prayer, he would feel happiness because if a person, you can't read it, leave an addiction unless you get something else that is just as fun and not dangerous. So that, 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 that other thing is the prayer. Begimel Madrig is the Bekhi of Etzitra Dai. You have to climb the three levels of happiness and both sadness and happiness. Vimlai. And if you're not going to do the emotional preparation, um, preparation, then you're going to just pull yourself back. Uh, no. 
And if you're not going to do it, you are going to pull yourself in one of the is in one of these emotions. If you're only going to go if you're only going to cry, and it's not going to bring you to the other side of the scale, I think that's why people stop doing it, because because if they're just going to cry, and they're not going to go to the other side of the happiness, the oh, if a person's only going to be happy. It's like it's like um, bipolar. They're only going to be happy, but too happy without having a little bit of fear in their hearts. Not restrained. If they're going to have just unrestrained happiness or unrestrained uh, crying, it's dangerous, right? Or you're going to do both, a compound emotion. In other words, you're going to recognize there's always the other side in every emotion, but it's not deep. It's not real. It's not deep. That shows that it didn't, the divine light did not touch his soul. In other words, if a person studies Hasidus and they don't change, then the divine light didn't really touch them, only from a very big distance. You may say, and this is the say on a macro level, this is the 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 divine. Um, Shechina, divine presence, God, that's God speaking, is hidden. It's in exile. Bechlolis Neshamas Yisrael, which, which is happening in all the souls of Israel, that there's a blockage in the entire, in the, in the, in the entire system. And now he's explaining that not making a proper preparation this is the, the main source of the reason, the general reason, all people that fall, tamid, all the time, they fall from their level. They can't keep it up. They have a pleasure and happiness, but it doesn't stay. That's It doesn't stay. It's not stable. It's not consistent. They have ups and downs like a roller coaster. Kamat menagdim. When there's something holding him back and something going against him, opposition, what happens is yinatku chevle hiskashrus. The ropes of connection are snipped melibe from his heart legamri totally, and he totally becomes like disconnected from the uh, divine. Like it says in the verse, the evil ones, that they don't want to be evil. And they're walking in the way of causing more and more problems. The food, real food, divine food, they despise. Intellectual food. And for this reason, anybody that wants to be close to the divine, in reality, he always needs, it needs to be part of your schedule that you need to prepare your heart. Make big preparation in your heart. But Tikkun Chatzais, at that time in the 1800s, it was common to do Tikkun Chatzais. We're going to speak about something else we can do. Like we spoke about the idea of having crying in one side of our heart. Do not fool yourself to destroy your soul for no reason at all. In other words, if you fail to make the preparation, then your divine will not be stable, and then you're basically losing your soul. Save your soul. It's all you need to do. It's a prepare. Now we understand the, the, the main reason for this big rule that we learned, B'Shem Rav Magidzal, in the name of the student of the Baal Shem Tev, the Rav Magid. The Magid was a student of the Baal Shem Tev. Meshikosov Ativish. Like, like Meshikosov, he wrote Ativish that naturally, this is This is a, a preparation to experiencing real pleasure 
like pleasure in the essence. When you say, Hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. When you say the word, the Lord is one, a person really is, he gives themselves over. Mesir Nefesh means give their soul to God. My soul, I'm giving it over to God. When he says the word one. But Kabbas called Razin, so when you give your soul to God, then you're able to receive the secrets. You can able to receive the secrets because you prepared. Like I wrote in another pamphlet at length. Now we should answer the question. We, we, the questions. Before you answer the question now, so person's going along, all revved up, charged up, all is good. He's connected to God. He sees the picture. He is happy and then he runs into obstacles whether it's an internal obstacle or it's an internal obstacle he starts to think it's not going to work something's not working he starts to get insecure what then is the answer at that point in time um he's going to need to go back to the drawing board and uh, schedule some time to make some emotional uh preparations in order that this um high that it is going to be more stable in other words he has to he has to um have to pivot to a different to this technique he has to pivot to this technique which we which we don't know how to do yet because we got, but we will absolutely know it once we read the, what the rebbe says over there okay um great thank you for explaining that we're looking forward to that um question what if anything do we have to do to cause the opposite to give rise to the desired positive emotion Say that again. I believe this is going back for context. It's going back to the point where um, you were discussing about the um, there's the opposite. These two sides of the scale, these two scales, um, opposite emotions. So the question is, what if anything do we have to do to cause the opposite to give rise to the desired positive emotion? So he, I, I assume that the positive emotion is deep down in everybody's soul already. Everybody wants divinity. They really do. And they want to be doing the right thing. Even people that are evil think that they're good. They're just confused. So, so how do we reveal that which we already have? In our hearts, that is through something that we can do, and that's feeling that devastation, which we can do easily. Say the last sentence again. Sorry. By 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 consciously exper uh, uh, thinking about the devastation, the the negative aspect of what we're missing. And I I, I think we should really go back to the to the. I think we can do it quick, quickly. The, the, the Rebbe's that paragraph for the Rebbe. Of the, of the Rebbe, the, the Rebbe, yeah, beautiful, Tess. Now let's, well, in the next paragraph. Yeah, this one. When you know, he says like this, the Zesh Yisrael Heim, well, I don't see. Sorry. A little bit low, lower, lower, lower the first line. Yeah. This that Israel are broken emotionally, feel a broken emotion, uh, the fact that they are in exile, even if they have good money and things are good. Even though they have um, abundance physically and spiritually, they still feel something's missing. That is because um, the real desire of everyone from Israel, and by extension, all humans in the world, who she is is that we really want a revelation of divinity. 
ועד שזה גילוי אלוקוס נגיע אל עצם מציוסי. Until revelation of divinity is really the, the core of my existence. ולכן, and therefore, גם שבזמן הגולוס אין מאיר גילוי אלוקוס, even though that in the time of exile when there's no temple, the revelation of divinity does not, is not apparent. Like it was during the times of the temple. And during the temple, basically, there were a lot of open miracles and fire would come out of the sky and a lot of people were able to be fit into a really small space and all sorts of miracles happen. And specifically when he reflects on this, what the rabbi said, Shamar Chazal, he thinks about the fact that anybody that the Beis HaMikdash wasn't built in his days, it's as if it was destroyed in his days. He named Atzme from this thought process, repetition in the mind. We have to repeat in our mind that if the temple is not built in our days, it's as if it's being destroyed now. And divinity, and this is, affects the whole world. In other words, it says that the non-Jews, if they would have understood what it, what the temple did for them, they would have put soldiers and not destroyed it. They would have put soldiers around it to protect it, because they also lost the revelation and abundance um, from from the temple. You know, so from the fact that it is being like as if it's being destroyed, in Atzme, is there in Gansen to Tretot causes from this itself. He is totally devastated. And Kossus means like a squeezed olive. And of course, and of course, when a, a, the point of being squeezed is not to feel squeezed. The point of squeeze is to give out oil. The point of thinking about this, that it's like the temple is being destroyed and it's the devastation for the entire humanity. It, it's being put into like dark ages, that prepares our heart to be a vessel for divine revelation. The Gam Kishul, now that's level one, that's on the level of Bina, on the left brain. Now let's go on the next level, the right brain. Gam Kishul Badarga Nihilis Beyeser. Let's say you are on a very high level. Shemeir Etzle Gililakus, that by you, Divine revelation shines. Bedugmas agilishaya bezman abes babais. You have a similar divine revelation to what was when the temple was standing. Mikal mokem, nevertheless, mizesh bechlolos ha'elam. From this, that in the general, in the whole world, klal is like the word hall. This, that in the whole world, a mayor agiloi. This the revelation doesn't shine. Muchach, it's a proof that even the divine revelation that's shining by you in your brain and heart and home is not as a re, is a limited revelation. It's not the real McCoy. It's a it's a limited revelation. It's not the because if the real and infinite light would be shining of divinity, so you're getting not the infinite light. If you really had the infinite light, then the revelation gets revealed in every single place in the world, in every single human being. being. There's one place, you know, there were even one human. A Filipina nidachas, even one corner of the world, which is pushed to the side, on some corner, Shane Mayor Sham Gilakus, that over there there is no divine revelation. That is because because the revelation Gamba Mokim Shum Mayor, even in the place where it shines, Mugili Mugbal, it's a revel, it's a limited revelation. It's not the real unlimited light. Vizel Masha Muva Bama. 
And this is brought by the, the, the uh, author of the Tanya, Disa Tikkunim. He says um, in Tikkunim, if there even would be one um, righteous man that would properly return to God and return to his own essence in a generation, then Mashiach would come. Because by completely returning to God, Mamshichem, we bring, that's not doing bad things. That means just returning to his essence. Then we bring down Giloy Aren We bring down the revelation of the unlimited light. And when that's turned on, it's going to be revealed in every single place in the world. Are in safe, and from this, that he doesn't have a revelation of this essential unlimited life. When the Ishpermanitka is broken, causes like a, he's devastated, like a squashed um, olive on the second level, and he's and he's not he's still on speaking. Explain the Yadua. No, the Aldera Hayadua, the Khala Begmatri Memtes. Again, if we would have the revelation, if we would have Mashiach, then every single human being would have the, 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 uh, the divine revelation. So we don't have Mashiach yet. And that's a problem. And even the divinity that I have when I pray, it's not the unlimited light. It's known that a illness. What is ill? What is the essence of being ill? Not ill just physically, but spiritually has, if you count up the number of value of those letters, each letter in the Hebrew has a number value. It ends up being memtes. It comes 49. And 49 is a significant number. Because there's 50 gates of understanding divinity. And if you only understand 49, you did a good job. You're up to 49. Even if you understand the 49 gates of the left brain of Bina. But you're missing the 50th gate. A person is ill. You have to understand the first one of the first things a person understands. He says, yes, I understand that you're ill. If you haven't got the 50 gate, I have 49. No, don't be satisfied. You know, when it comes to money, you need to be satisfied with what you have. Spiritually, you have to be unsatisfied. Even if you have 49, you didn't get to 50. You didn't get to the essence. You're missing something. So he just explained still the second level. Now he's already going to the third level. And it's known what the Tzemach Tzedek wrote. Shahaya Nishma Mirain Mirain of Rabbeinu Nishma Saidan Admor Azakin. Tzemach Tzedek was the third Lubavitcher Rebbe. He was he was a young he he was the young grandson who was brought up by his grandfather, the the Admor Azakin, the old Rabbi who was the author of the Tanya. Who is the author of the Tanya, and he used to do a verbalization. And the reason why I used to do a verbalization is because when you repeat something meaningful over and over again, it actually brings it out, makes it, reveals it, makes it happen. And this is what he used to verbalize to himself. Ichvel ze gornitzt. He used to verbalize in the, low, the, in the language Yiddish. He says, I want nothing. Ichvel nit dein gan Eden. I do not want your garden of Eden. I do not want your world to come. Hold I don't want anything more as you yourself, the essence of God. In other words, a lot of people are pretty satisfied. I want to be saved and I want to have the I want to go, I don't want to go to, I want to go to the to Garden of Eden. And I, I want to go to have a portion of the world to come. 
right? And even if I want it for the right reason, I just want a divinity to be revealed, right? I'll be happy with these high levels. Alter Rebbe says, the Alter Rebbe was training himself. No, he used to verbalize repeatedly. I don't want the, uh, the Garden of Eden. I don't want the world to come. I just want you, the essence of God. He wanted a direct relationship with the essence of God. Those other things are meaningless to him. Even though they weren't, but he was training himself to, to, to that they should be meaningless. And because we actually found out about this, that he used to say this, the Peter Shaya Nishma and the word, and then it says it, it was heard means it was not that he did this just once in a while, once a week or once a month. No. El Shaya Dora Ragil is a regular, Ragil, regular. It was a regular practice that he did this. Maybe it was every day. Maybe it was more than once a day. Specifically, when the Tzamach Tzedek, who was the Rebbe, who became the first Rebbe, he told everybody about this. Now, the, tzema, the Rebbe, don't tell people around about it unless it's a reason, it's a need-to-know basis. So why do we need to know this? So by letting us know this, power was given, emotional fortitude was given, to every single person from Israel that that his main desire should be not spirituality, not personal salvation, not personal revelation, not personal inspiration, not um, insight being revealed. No, revelation of essence, nothing else. Revelation of the original essence and so much so when that revelation is not revealed apparent apparent how much more so now in exile we are still in exile till the temple is built right nowadays we don't even have the, the, the divine light that used to be revealed in the time of the temple. Who the matter of the cutted? For sure, a person is a situation of devastation. And a person asks three times. Now, this is this is how we stick it in our schedule. This is how we stick it in our schedule. Three times a day, we ask, or oh, yes, or more than three times a day, in, in the uh, stand-up 19 blessing prayer, three times a day, we do this in, this, in the prayer book, when we say like this, so one of the, um, one of the, the words of the, one of the blessings is, our eyes should see. It means revelation, right? Our eyes should see, should be physicalized as well. Your return to Zion. That means your return to the temple. Your return means his presence, a divinity, revelation. I mean, he's everywhere, but we just, it's not apparent. So we mean your return in apparent way to the temple. Barachimim, it should happen with Rachimim and not through. Pandemics, which could happen with compassion. That's my compassion. We've been asking for almost 2,000 years. We know there's going to be a birth and there's going to be a revelation of divinity, but we want the process in which we get there to be with compassion. Let it be a mild, more mild birth. We ask it three times a day. But what, we, what we're asking for is that the bottom line is not that it should come, that, that the revelation should happen. Because then there will be a revelation of divinity and there'll be like stages of and even the essence will be revealed. So first, we have some divine revelation. Then we have a revelation that's, that's, that's in, the, 
in the entire world. Everybody in the world wakes up. Then even every every last corner of the world. And then we're going to get the revelation of the essence. So that's what we're asking for. And that's, we take a moment to pause before we say that blessing to think about the fact that our, that, that it's really devastating, the fact that we don't have any revelation like, like similar to the temple. And even if I have revelation and I'm happy, if somebody is not happy, then even my revelation is not the real, the real McCoyle. It's not the unlimited light. And really, the Rebbe, Alter Rebbe, revealed that we could even want Atmos and not to be satisfied with any levels besides the real essence. Bezel Kassas Lamar, and this is what it means that we are crushed by being devastated, this actually re, um, um, reveals the source of light in our soul. Not just light, but the source of light, our essence. Shalidei Aion, Aionian, the causes through the idea that we are devastated, Mizeh, from this, Shenim Tzayim, that we find ourselves, Begolos, in exile, Magim La'amar, the devastation actually reveals that we reach the, the source of light in our soul. Gizesh in the Chol Echad Meisrael, because this, that the desire of every one of Israel, who Gilu Yalukos, is divine revelation, that's what we want. Va'ad Shezeh Nagel Etem Yosei, and this actually, it, it touches our core existence. Like everything else is meaningless. And therefore a person is, is dev broken and devastated, causes squeezed like an olive. From the fact that now in the exile, in other words, no temple, there is no... Um, a divine revelation. And whom it's sad, it's a and this is something, this is a core of the soul, feels this. Me'er um, Shem the the source of light in our soul, not the just the shine, but the source in our soul. Shaiskashrusa, iskashrusa, belukus, the connection of our soul to divinity, who his kashus atmis, really we have a essential connection to divinity. And by reflecting on the fact that we do not have divine revelation and we pray three times a day, may our eyes see your return. In other words, we don't want just the lower revelation. We want the the, the the bigger revelation, the one that's going to be everywhere in the essence, right? And we want it to happen with compassion, that the process of, of getting there should happen with compassion and should have compassion on us, that the process should happen. So I, I believe we had a question. We have a question. And the question is, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Smith, do you think that we are living in the times of Mashiach? Pretty close to it. I'm sorry? Pretty close to it. I I heard from one of my teachers that he said that the the, the process Mashiach is really a process of unfolding of a greater and greater divine revelation. And he suggested that the times of the unfolding of the days of Mashiach started in the times of the Baal Shem Tov because the Torah of Hasidus, which is really the, the understanding, the inner pulsing life blood of the Torah, the force of the Torah, the, the life energy of God Almighty coming into the world uh, is something and that, that we actually start to see in the world around that, that there's nothing besides God Almighty. That is something that was revealed beginning with the Baal Shem Tov and um, he, uh, he is saying, pointing out that this is increasing so it's a process of the Baal Shem Tov coming to the world. And, and, and he was told that when he asked Mashiach, he said he had a soul elevation. He was able to ask Mashiach the question, when will, when will my master come? When will Mashiach come? So 
the uh, so Mashiach said to him, I will come when when your wellsprings, the wellsprings of the inner teachings of the Torah are spread out to the entire world, to the entire existence, everyone's going to know this, then that is um, that is something that, that that's, it's going to, that's Mashiach. So, so in that extent, we are living in the times of the unfolding of Mashiach. Do we have the fulfillment of Mashiach yet in terms of the rebuilding the temple and, and, and all the different um, aspects of Mashiach, which we have a class on, we, we could actually do one like that, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Chirik at some point. Um, but that is still, we're still eagerly anticipating that every moment. That I heard from Rabbi, that I heard from that, from Rabbi Shneur Zalman Gaffney. I, I really think that people in the squeeze now, like, like, my analysis of the situation, the spiritual situation, is that people like you got to do the squeeze yourself, on yourself. That's the that's the optimum. Like I don't need somebody outside to squeeze me. I prefer to do it myself. Thank you, right? But I think that the communities are getting a squeeze because if you don't do it, you know things need to be hurried up a little bit. Like they just, Melbourne just went into a, uh, Victoria, Melbourne, Australia just went into a, another lockdown where they're getting squeezed economically and, 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 and socially. And, um, and when, if you like study the subject, and, and um, it's like, doesn't make any sense. I can only say that this is like a divine squeeze. So how about people just, make up that they will do the squeeze ourselves you know just lift the lockdown we're gonna we're gonna do it three times a day we'll think about the 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 fact that the lack of divine revelation oops we'll, we'll think about the fact that we have a, a lack of divine revelation and um and we're gonna open up our hearts to be vessels for the divine revelation to happen i just think it's just like we're getting like nudged in various places of the world and we could just do it ourselves i mean i would love to be able to like get this message across it just takes an hour or so to explain and most a lot of people don't have the patience to to think through the whole you know what's what's going on it's very hard to put this in, into a nutshell little nutshell explanation without a person actually going through the text and I think it's beautiful what you're saying about people thinking that they're not able to um, think, be, have the patience for it. I think one of the um, concepts that reduce our patience is we think it's going to take a lot of effort. We're going to have to work very hard to follow and understand this. And so when we, when we just keep it simple, we realize that it's very, very simple. It's an emotion that we have, a feeling that we have of being devastated from the fact that things are not the way they should be. And every person, without much effort whatsoever, is able to, to come to that. In fact, uh, if you look in Tikkun Chatzais itself, it's, it's a compilation largely of psalms from King David. Um, and, and it's a, 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 just a recognition, hey, this is not the way the world is supposed to be. Even a, as a, even a simple person today, I mean, we're all simple, but I'm saying even a, a person who didn't even open yet the Psalms is able to see, wait, this is not the way things are supposed to be. So in terms of the patience, we just have to educate people that uh, just open their eyes. That feeling that you're having right now that things are not the way they're supposed to be and you wish there was something different and you, and you know there's supposed to be something different, here's what it's supposed to look like. We could show them. And then that's that's all they need. They're 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 capable. That that basic human emotion is what God is looking for. So 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 Rabbi, um, what you're saying is a message that could be useful for anybody, whether people have studied the subject, whether it's necessary to make a a is it, you know the data guys, the statistic guys, the people that analyze in the past where lockdowns were useful and helpful in the past, right? And there's the people that are just following uh, other people's instructions. They didn't do the real research and, they, and they, they, they think that it's useful. It doesn't matter whether they think it's useful or not useful, whether they're informed or uninformed, whether they, they've researched that or not. They all can be receptive 
to the recognition that things are not the way they are supposed to be, and we need to be devastated about that. But don't stay devastated. That actually opens up your heart to a whole new human level. And that actually, that, that little thought, which is not really difficult, really hard, actually opens your mind to be sensitive to divinity and the divine light. So maybe this message could be given in a, in a really short, uh, very catchy way to, to everybody. I guess we need to speak about that to the people around us and make it shorter and shorter and more digestible that um, then anybody will actually start doing it. And maybe then from the divine side, we won't need to, to do artificial ways of squeezing people. Right, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, we have our work cut out for us. Um, we have a question? One other, one other question. What can we do when another, one who is in a position of power, is not open to reflecting on the devastation? So, um, I think the person in power maybe wants the devastation. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't know, we we can't need people that no, that they're not the people. I was speaking about the regular people. Well, there's two things. First of all, the people that are in power that want the devastation, they are really deep down in their their essence of their existence. They they want also to be connected to God Almighty. So, um, but their actions are are definitely bringing devastation. But I think that the other point is just from looking at your question, it's like one who is in a position of power, well, who's giving them that power? It's only you and me by thinking that they have power. You know, it, when, it, when someone says, uh, you, you're, you're going somewhere and that someone says to you, um, uh, you know, I, I went into a store today and I didn't, I wasn't wearing a mask. And um, someone, a employee comes up to me and starts telling me I have to wear a mask and says in the door there's a mask on. So I, I just continued to do what I was doing because now another person would say, I have to I have to do this because they're in charge. They they have power. Well, it's it's so it's just really a question of who are you giving the power to um and and who are you ascribing the power to? This 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 applies on the on the highest levels. Even even the most totalitarian regime where you would say okay in in communist Russia, North Korea, Cuba, all these places where there's, you know, real physical terror uh consequences and immediate death from from uh, doing anything against the regimes and the people in power, but still each person is acknowledging their power because we're, we're saying if we, if that, the person who's not, who's staying alive and the price they're paying to stay alive is to acknowledge the power of an evil person is in reality, making a choice to make that person's uh, acknowledge that person's power or, or his not dying more important than his his uh, ability to, to declare that there's no power in the world other than God Almighty. So that that's a choice that the person's making. And on the aggregate, if if all the people there just said we're not recognizing uh, Premier so and so uh, and pr President so and so, that would be the end of the whole regime. The whole regime only works by terrorizing people to think that if only they behave, they won't get the the bad consequences that they've been told that the consequences are really, really bad and led to believe that. And that's what we talked about before, because if a person believes in God Almighty, that there's one God and there's two worlds, like the previous Lubavitcher said to the interrogators from the NKVD, he said to them, he's not scared by their guns because they can't, nothing's going to happen. They can't separate him from God Almighty. And he's not going to volunteer to give them power that he will volunteer to disconnect himself from god almighty so maybe they will do something to him that will transfer him from one world to the next but he'll maintain his connection to god almighty throughout all that so therefore they don't have any power on him whatsoever even if they were god forbid to end his physical life they haven't disconnected him from from god almighty but the person who says oh, oh my gosh that's terrible i can't believe that that's going to happen i would not want to um to to have to 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 go to the next world 
or they don't know about the next world and they don't even know about God Almighty, then this now becomes a real force. This is the power in the world. And that's why these people have power. It's because of the voluntary thoughts and actions of the people that are giving them the power. And so I think that that's why, I think that's very important for us to remember in our questions, when we look at the world and we wonder why things are the way they are, why are they happening the way they are, we, even in our questions, don't ascribe power to these people. They don't have power over anybody. They only have power over those that volunteer for it. And our job is to connect each person to God Almighty so that they recognize that there's a real loving power that they can connect to, that they don't need to you know, surrender their lives to, to petty um, and really pathetic uh, presentations of phys power in the physical world. I, I think also furthermore that people need to recognize that life is not life without, without uh, you know, without a revelation. If if the person's biggest thing is to protect grandmother or protect life, but the life is not a real life of, of revelation of divinity, so it's it's bitter, it's devastating. We want a life. What a person needs to recognize that when when what's really valuable to me is true life, then I'm not afraid anymore of, of just the physical, um, you know, challenges of discomfort. I mean, it's, it just, it just to, I'm willingness to be this uncomfortable and, and to, to be tough and to be able to face uh, challenges because there's something deeper that I'm looking for. And that is, that is the, a, a revelation, a divine revelation. You know, life just on, just like being living like a fish, is not something that's really meaningful to me. And people need to recognize as humans, we don't just want to like exist, we want to live. Sorry, I didn't hear? No, I, um, I was gonna point out here in, in the uh, chat, uh, the following comment, good point. I'm thinking also that if I manage to connect with my divine essence, then it will touch everyone. And, and this is, uh, you really hit the point over here because this is exactly what the Rebbe was saying in that mimer. He was saying that if one righteous person connects to the essence, then that will bring revelation, that will bring redemption for everybody. Because when that one person, it, that one, what that one person does affects everybody, affects the entire world. So you're absolutely right. And this is what this is where this is the whole point that your actions are are not um, are not in isolation. It's not just about your own experience. Your experience of connecting to godliness and living that way impacts everybody and people that are on the other side of the world. It's it's a tremendous. It's bringing godliness down to the world. So you're absolutely right. So that that's. Very good. That that that's inspiring. That we're, we're we're all seeing together this point, and and this is where the answers lie. The answers to everything that ails humanity lie exactly right here, in what we're discussing right now. What what happens is you actually feel, see a physical change on the people around you because when you do these thoughts and you connect to your divine, um, um, divine spark and you recognize what real life is, so then you find that the people outside of you wake up and they stop wearing their masks and being worried about things that actually make no medical sense right so well, that's, my, that's yeah. what happens you're going to see people waking up and you're going to see why am i doing this because you woke yourself up it somehow it shines the other people very very con in a concrete way yes and there's an expression that says that that uh, um the the um the, uh, like, like, just like the water reflects the face of a person, so too the face of another person reflects the person. So what that means is if I am looking at another human being like they are a divine being that has the es that their essence is really godliness, they will reflect that and see that in themselves, to be awoken by looking in, in my eyes, seeing them as a divine being, they will then reflect that and see that in themselves. It on us, uh, When we learn that expression, we think on one superficial level, it says, okay, if I smile at you, you're gonna smile back. Like we're gonna reciprocity. 
but it goes much deeper than that. The way I look at you affects the way you look at you. That's the real reflection. So if I look at you as a healthy, per godly person created in the divine image, no matter what you're doing, you could be wearing a mask, you could be wearing six masks, you could be locked in your house, looking outside the window, um, calling the police department to report people that are walking around, you know, jogging without masks and, and um, or, or wearing a uniform and acting like a, a petty tyrant. All those kind of, um, uh, some people would look at them and say, that guy's, that guy's out of his mind, he's sick, he's, he, and look at him in the negative way, and then he, that's what he sees, people looking at him that way, and that's what he feels inside of himself, that's what's, that's what's reflected in him, in him, but if you look at him and see, there's a, there's the divine spark in a great state of exile, in this person who's, who's terrified of the air, terrified of people, terrified of the world coming to an end, terrified of losing his job, so he's beating people or arresting people, but it's really a person, divine, the divine image is in this person and on this person, then if you're looking at that person that way, and that's what you see, he will then reflect that and see that in himself. And that will change him. And that will change his thinking, his speech, his actions, and, and then set him on the right path to his own journey to connect to God Almighty. That's really interesting because we really have a recipe over here is that first you do in your prayer, you think about the fact that what's valuable is divine revelation, whatever that means, something similar to what was in the temple um, where miracles are uh, apparent and God is apparent. And and that's and we don't have that. I'm devastated. So you open up your own heart and then it's going to shine on your face, right? That's why mask is really God telling us what the secret over here is. And then when you confront those people, those people that are masked, but they, they see your face. And especially if it's a group, they see your, your resolve and there's something in your face that now they see. They think twice about themselves. Even if you're not able to explain to them, guys, look up the data, read the studies, mm -hmm. even if you're not able to do any of this. But there's something about your face that makes impact on their hearts. And maybe that's the, that's the secret of it. Well, that is, that, that, Eric, that is the key thing, because if you argue on the data, you're not connecting them to God. I mean, you're connecting to the with the truth or the you know the, the separating the truth from falsehood, and that is that is important. And there's 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 divinity in that, but but that's not connecting to the source because then they're just wandering around as as stat, statisticians, which is and, and statistics, by the way, as as um, as Mark Twain said, there's lies, darn lies, and then there's statistics. Statistics is the lowest form of falsehood. And he was saying this in the 1800s. So if you're just going to argue the numbers with somebody, you're still leaving him in the world of falsehood because tomorrow there's a different statistic comes out and there's a different study and a different analysis, a different projection, all this kind of stuff. It's just, it's all pure 100% falsehood. So it, why, why, why grapple with another human being in that level? Because you can't elevate him from that level within that level. On the contrary, the main thing is the smile. The main thing is the look in the eyes. If the, if the point of, of verbal conversation is related to some statistical discussion temporarily, but that's not, the real, that's not the real connection. The real connection is in the eyes. The real connection is in the smile. The real connection is in the rachamim, the compassion that we are meant to have, the love and understanding and compassion for that person. When we have that, that's what's going to touch the other person. And, and at the end, he's not going to be or even remembering what the statistics are or were because it's it's irrelevant right well then he needs some little explanation to try and uh, understand what's going on but hopefully that will be the easier side of it though i mean well, that, it's the easier side when there's a when it comes with a smile when it comes with a smile so so i i think we we understand like what is god telling us this is the hand of god this is not just some evil you know, like in the Bible, there's looking at the steak. You could look at the steak and it's going to, it's, it, it's poisonous. And then Moses put the snake on a, on a, on a pole and you can see God. This is really God. And anybody that looks at the snake on the pole, they're really, well, this is really God. I, I made a mistake. I should have been more grateful. They were healed. So you can say I, everything is coming from the, the evil inclination. No, this is the hand of God. The hand of God is squeezing people in order that they should feel squeezed. So, so do it. Do it yourself, right? Do it yourself. Do the, do the thought process. Do it with rachamim. Do it with compassion. 
that you can go through some sort of process and, and, and experience compassion. Right. But then there's, then there's the second part is, okay, so what's, the, what's God telling us with the mask? That's the secret over here. If you did it in your heart, it's going to shine through your face onto the other people. And, and then the divine energy and, 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 uh, and compassion spreads. And the, the fact that you value um, um, the opposite of, you know, the opposite of, of lack of divine um, revelation. I think the lack of divine revelation is a bunch of people, you know, walking around as zombies. That, that's lack of divine revelation. How many zombies are we going to have? It's so sad that, 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 that you know, and that, that is lack of revelation. And you think it's so sad that people don't, you, you know, use cognitive processing and critical thinking. This is lack of divine revelation. Humans should be like that. They're, we're thinkers. Right. Not well, just. Thinkers. So we see there's a problem over here. So we basically we had we, we, we never knew what divine revelation is. But when you have like less of it, when you come to the revelation where people don't have um, uh, you, you, you realize that a lot of people don't use critical thinking. You say, oh, my gosh, poor people. Right, 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 right. And when you see there, when you see, it's like we're learning in the mimer that we just, we've been studying, that when you have the painful feeling, it, it gives you an appreciation for the positive feeling. And when you see that people are walking around more and more concealing themselves and more and more isolating themselves, it makes you realize the, the greatness of human connection, the, the God's revelation in, in humanity and, and through humanity and um and, and appreciate it and then you want to br bring people back out of their state of stupor so this is this is why you know we keep talking and driving home the point that this is really a spiritual problem and the only solution is a spiritual solution you see you know we if we talk about president we're going to fight a file of litigation to end the mass mandate now that's a litigation could be an important thing it could be it's important to stand up against these things it's important to take action but at the end of the day Winning or losing the let's say winning the litigation and and uh, is not is not is not changing the spiritual state of the governor or of all the people that were willing to follow him. Okay, so now the court said you, you don't have to wear a mask. That didn't change people's spirit. That just said you're now the order is don't wear a mask. <laughs> so so now they're just still following orders. Oh, the court said that now we could show our faces. That's a a state of of submission that is unchanged whether we like the mask or don't like the mask we like this particular law or don't like that particular law so the really the solution is is to bring about the spiritual solution which is that you're created in god's image you have a divine soul and and the answers are here god almighty is providing the answers and it's like the um the, the, we were learning last night that that when you're when you're directly connected to God Almighty, then the, the healing is there, and and the wisdom is directly coming from God Almighty. So, this is what we this is we need to immerse ourselves in this. Uh, like the question before, if if we're, are, are we in the times of Mashiach? Well, if we are using this time to ruminate and to criticize and to um, you know wonder when the Monday night football is coming back. And all these kind of things and, and play Tetris, we're missing an opportunity to immerse ourselves in this sea of knowledge, which is the, the revelation of, the God, of godliness. The, the, the knowledge of God is the purpose of mankind. It, it, the Torah tells us that the purpose of mankind is going to be revealed in the times of Mashiach because we're going to do our function is going to be solely to learn Torah. It's going to be to learn divine wisdom, to learn godliness, and to be connected to godliness. And we're going to learn directly from God Almighty. So that's what we can start doing now. And, that, and the more that we do that, the more we're able to share that with other people, the more we're able to reflect that in our faces, and, and that reflects into other people. And the more we're able to bring about a revelation of that, that it's not just in a, um, into, in a physical book that we have to then look at the world and, and, and try to uh, intuit what it really is that it's only the word of God. But in, when Mashiach is completely revealed, it's going to be, that's all we're going to see is the word of God. In the physical world, each object will be seen for what it really is, is that it's nothing but, but the world of God, the word of God. So um, 
So I, I think that uh, someone said, so maybe, that maybe it is the time of Mashiach for those for whom it is time. And, and the, I think the answer is, well, the, the, like we said before in the Mimer that we were learning, that the chapter nine that we learned from the, the Rebbe, if we, in order to have, time of Mashiach is gonna be unlimited revelation of godliness. And even as much as I have a sense of being inspired at this moment in time and a sense of godliness, I now I have to realize if I see that there's any even one person in the world walking around in the Bronx or somewhere in in uh, you know uh, Congo or somewhere in Paris who is not aware of godliness, that means that what I'm experiencing is limited. So I can't be having a full experience of, of Mashiach right now. There are some very very you know righteous people that maybe are on such a level. There's a, a stories that relate to that, but but for for the rest of us, we are. Our, our experience of godliness is limited for uh, by the fact that it's limited in the world as a whole. So it can't be that I, I have Mashiach and, and someone else doesn't because if I had Mashiach, then he would have it too. And that feeling, so, so what's meant to be is that to realize, oh my gosh, I am inspired, but the only way that I can get there is if we all get there. And, and that's our goal. Our goal is to see humanity thrive and expand in the, both spiritually and physically, that this is going to be visible to all. Okay, let's uh, pause now and we'll regroup next week. I'm just going to say a word about the partial. Hold on a second, I'm going to start a new recording.